Hello, class 12th physics, Viva questions from ray optics. So what is light? So light is an electromagnetic wave which produces visible, visible sensation in our eyes. It belongs to that uh, electromagnetic wave spectrum where the wavelength range is from 4000 angstrom to 7000 angstrom approximately. Light has dual nature. It is wave as well as particle. It shows interference and diffraction which is wave property. It shows the photoelectric effect and Compton effect and ionization which is uh, particle nature. So what is diffraction of light? So whenever light passes from one medium to other medium then its speed changes. It is called refraction and due to refraction obliquely incident ray uh, at the interface of two media appears to bend. So what is the cause of refraction of light? So change of speed of light from one medium to other medium uh, is the cause of refraction. Okay, how does wavelength and frequency of light change during refraction? So actually light is a wave, so its a wave characteristic will change during refraction. So actually frequency doesn't change. But wavelength changes. Why wavelength changes while frequency of light remains same during refraction? So, frequency remains same because uh, the propagation of light through a medium, one medium to other medium, um, undergoes elastic collision between photon of light and uh, the particles of medium. So their uh, energy remains constant and uh, as according to Planck's quantum theory, energy is equal to h nu where h is Planck's constant and nu is frequency. So frequency doesn't change but wavelength changes and why wavelength change uh, it has some advanced level of uh, explanation but in short we can say that its speed changes and as speed of electromagnetic wave is uh, wavelength times frequency and as frequency it remains a constant and as uh, speed changes so wavelength changes. What is refractive index? How is it related to wavelength of light? So, uh, refractive index of a medium is the ratio between speed of light in vacuum to speed of light in that medium. Actually, it is the measure that how denser is that medium uh, or in other words, uh, how slow uh, than uh, the speed of light in vacuum uh, light is propagating in that medium. Uh, so, uh, refractive index is C by V and uh, it means it is inversely proportional to velocity of light in that medium and velocity is equal to frequency into wavelength so uh, it is inversely proportional to uh, refractive index is inversely proportional to wavelength of light in that medium What is critical angle? How is it related with the refractive index? When incident ray passes from denser medium toward rarer medium, then the angle of incidence at which angle of refraction is 90 degree is called critical angle. Sin IC, where IC is critical angle, sin IC is equal to 1 upon refractive index of that denser medium. And as we know uh, that uh, refractive index and wavelength of uh, light in that medium are in inverse proportion so critical angle and wavelength are in direct proportion so for longer wavelength like uh, red color critical angle is greater and for uh, shorter wavelength uh, that is for violet uh, critical angle is smaller so what is total internal reflection give some examples so when uh, ray of light passes from denser medium toward the rarer medium and if angle of incidence is greater than critical angle then the ray instead of getting refracted into that uh, rarer medium bounce back into same medium it is called total internal reflection total internal reflection takes place inside the diamond and uh, due to total internal reflection mirage formation takes place in uh, the desert region and also optical fiber is based upon this phenomena total internal reflection 
other than that uh, sound wave also get uh, total internally reflected and that is why in the night time uh, sound waves get reflected back and uh, that is why sound appears louder name the lens which always forms real image so none of the lens uh, always form real image we know that convex lens forms real image but it is also not always in one of the cases it forms virtual image also it happens when object is placed between pole and focus under which condition concave lens can form a real image that's surprising uh, but yeah it is possible so if object is virtual then a concave lens can form real image to understand more about it uh, you can refer to ncrt book there is a question in which a convergent beam meets at point p and when concave is placed then still it converges but beyond p so at that time concave is producing uh, real image so you can refer to that but at that time uh, object is a virtual object the angle between incident ray and emergent ray is called angle of deviation so mathematically it is delta equal to delta uh, for uh, angle of deviation is equal to i plus e incidence angle and emergent angle minus a angle of prism or angle of vertex of prism okay under which conditions angle of deviation is minimum so there are some conditions when angle of incidence is equal to angle of emergence then angle of deviation is minimum when the refracted ray inside the prism is parallel to the base then it is minimum or r1 and r2 angles inside the prism that is from one surface it is a refracted angle and on other side it is incident angle they are equal using thin prism formula explain dispersion so for thin prism angle of deviation delta is equal to a that is a angle of prism multiplied by refractive index minus 1 now refractive index depends upon wavelength of uh, light in that medium that is for uh, red color wavelength is greater so in that medium it will still greater and that is why its refractive index will be lesser for red color and as delta is equal to a times refractive index minus 1 so delta is in direct proportion with the refractive index and refractive index a is inversely proportional to wavelength in that medium so angle of deviation is inversely proportional to wavelength so for red wavelength is greater so angle of deviation will be lesser name the types of lenses so convex and concave but other than that plano convex plano concave convex or concave concave convex and cylindrically convex also well focal length of a lens depends upon its refractive index uh, i mean uh, the refractive index of its material and also uh, of the refractive index of medium in which it is placed so if we put it into water then overall refractive index decreases relative refractive index decreases if uh, earlier it is uh, refractive index eta g uh, then you know, for uh, if we placed it into water then it will be eta g divided by eta w so overall refractive index decreases so using lens makers formula you can easily explain this thing but the refractive uh, uh, sorry uh, focal length of uh, mirror spherical mirror depends upon its radius of curvature only so there is no effect of uh, uh, medium present around it so no matter it is air or water or any other thing it just depends upon its radius of curvature so there will be no effect on spherical mirror what is the difference between linear magnification and an angular magnification so uh, we know in uh, lens formula we uh, write uh, linear magnification also which is height of image upon height of object in the same way for optical instruments uh, in order to understand uh, how much they magnify we use angular magnification which is angle subtended at final image uh, divided by angle subtended at object when it is placed in at least distance of distinct region or uh, in some cases at infinity why reflecting type telescope is preferred over refracting type telescope means reflecting type means in which mirror is used refracting type in which lens is used so actually uh, telescope the requirement of telescope is a larger uh, objective uh, lens 
but up to a certain limit it is difficult to um, handle that large uh, lens and uh, make it uh, homogeneously um, refracting and uh, it requires lots of support beyond a certain limit and uh, it has some chromatic aberration that is prism effect uh, if it is very large it is very bulky then so in order to avoid all of it refracting telescope that is mirror based telescope is used in which object instead of objective lens there is objective mirror which is a concave mirror and mirror doesn't have that uh, much problems as compared to lens it doesn't have chromatic aberration that is prism effect it doesn't have that uh, it requires lesser support so and uh, it is uh, quite easy than that lens uh, to manufacture it so objective lens, uh, even objective mirror, in case of ref reflecting type, uh, has larger aperture to collect maximum number of rays and produce sharp image. Also, the larger aperture uh, helps for greater resolving power. Can we see an atom using high power microscope? Why? Answer is no. Uh, the reason for that is, if we want to see an object, then it must have size greater than the order of wavelength of light. So, because atom has order of 10 to the power minus 10 meter and wavelength of light has order 10 to the power minus 7 meter. So, atom is a thousand times smaller than the wavelength of light. So, it is difficult to detect it with any uh, powerful microscope because we are using um, uh, the wave which uh, has uh, wavelength quite greater than the size of object. That's all for today. Wait for next video.